Hello, I'm Eric Strong, and in this installment of An Approach to Symptoms, I'll be discussing generalized pruritus, commonly known as itching. In this situation, when I'm referring to generalized pruritus, I don't necessarily mean that it's felt literally everywhere, but rather that it spans more than one focal anatomic region. I'm going to present two different systems to classify its etiologies. In the first, Dermatologists sometimes consider pruritus to be classified by a specific group and or by category. There are three groups of pruritus. The first is pruritus of diseased skin. The second is pruritus of non-diseased skin. And the third is pruritus associated with secondary chronic scratch lesions, which may then further worsen the itching. Group three is predominantly the domain of dermatology, and I won't be talking about it more in this brief general overview. Categories of pruritus include dermatologic, systemic, neurologic, psychogenic, mixed, meaning a presentation spanning more than one category, and then other, which I would also consider to include idiopathic. The pruritus category can be mapped onto the group. For example, dermatologic conditions obviously map onto group one, while systemic neurologic and psychogenic causes map onto group 2. Neurologic disease, in particular, usually causes focal well localized pruritus due to irritation or damage to a peripheral nerve, and thus these conditions will be outside the scope of this discussion of generalized pruritus. That classification system is perfectly fine and is reproduced in the dermatology literature, but as an internist and hospitalist, I prefer a slightly different system, which I'm going to discuss in more depth. I think about the etiologies of pruritus as falling into three highest level categories, dermatologic, that which is secondary to systemic disease, and other. Under dermatologic, there are non-infectious and infectious etiologies. Non-infectious includes cirrhosis, commonly known as dry skin. Risk factors for this include advanced age, frequent bathing, and dry home heating during the winter months. Atopic dermatitis is a chronic inflammatory condition with a typical onset in childhood and a strong family association. Contact dermatitis is precisely what it sounds like, inflammation of the skin secondary to physical contact with something, which can be caused either by a true allergic reaction or a non-allergic irritant reaction. Patients with psoriasis often experience pruritus, typically worse at night, which may or may not be limited to the regions of psoriatic plaques. And last in this category is urticaria, better known as hives. While often considered just a form of allergic reaction, urticaria has its own broader differential, which includes both IgE-mediated and non-IgE-mediated immunologic phenomena. Among infectious causes of generalized pruritus, scabies is the most dreaded. Scabies are microscopic mites that burrow into the upper layer of the epidermis where they lay eggs. While they aren't particularly dangerous per se, they are relatively contagious, spreading easily in crowded conditions such as group homes, daycare centers, prisons, and homeless shelters. Dermatophytes are a group of fungi that use keratin for nutrition. In other words, you can think of them as living off of dead skin cells. They are colloquially known as tinea and sometimes further labeled by the part of the body they are affecting, such as tinea corporis when infecting the torso, or tinea pedis when infecting the feet. Generalized pruritus can also be the consequence of multiple arthropod bites, such as bed bugs. The next major category of etiologies is systemic disease, and there are a lot of them. I'll be listing just the most common and most notable here. In my own practice, Renal failure is the most common cause of generalized pruritus that I see, which is sometimes referred to as uremic pruritus, affecting approximately half of people on hemodialysis at some point. Cholestatic liver disease, that is any disease of the liver or biliary system, which is characterized by obstruction to bile flow and by bile stasis, can also cause pruritus. This is known predictably as cholestatic pruritus. While any cause of cold stasis can cause this problem, conditions that are anecdotally particularly prone to it include primary biliary cholangitis, primary sclerosing cholangitis, 
drug-induced cholestasis, and cholestasis of pregnancy. There are several malignancies that are classically associated with generalized pruritus, including Hodgkin's lymphoma and cutaneous T-cell lymphoma, of which the most common subtype is called mycosis fungoides. There are case reports of patients with lymphoma whose generalized pruritus preceded other manifestations of the disease and thus preceded a diagnosis by years, making it important to always consider this possibility. Polycythemia vera, often known as just P. vera, is a chronic leukemia of red blood cell precursors. It's associated with a distinctive symptom called aquagenic pruritus, which is when the pruritus is triggered by physical contact with water. Autoimmune diseases affecting the skin can also cause pruritus, best described with dermatomyositis, scleroderma, and primary Sjogren syndrome. Both hypo- and hyperthyroidism are reported in the literature as causes of pruritus, although it's not a common symptom of either. And HIV infection is associated as well. The last major category is other. Here we find drug side effect. While there have been many different drugs reported to cause pruritus, by a huge margin, the most common and universally cited are opiates. Psychogenic pruritus is that which is caused by psychiatric illness. This can be tricky to diagnose because chronic pruritus can be a severely troubling symptom that can lead to depression and anxiety. So before diagnosing psychogenic pruritus, just be sure that you have the cause and effect in the correct order. And finally is idiopathic, known formally as chronic pruritus of unknown origin when it has lasted for at least six weeks. Overall, the most common cause of generalized pruritus is plain old dry skin. Though when considering only patients in the hospital, renal failure and opiate side effect are the most common etiologies. When it comes to evaluating pruritus, consider its chronology, specifically its duration and whether it's episodic, implying a recurrent exposure versus constant. Ask about its distribution. Is it the entire body or is it only confined to certain areas? Is there a specific trigger? As mentioned, water as a trigger is suggestive, though not pathognomonic, of polycythemia vera. Are there associated symptoms? For example, jaundice strongly suggests cholestasis. Weight gain might suggest fluid retention from renal failure. And weight loss and fever might suggest a malignancy. Does the patient have a history of hematologic liver, biliary, autoimmune, or renal disease? And are there any new medications? In the social history, have they been in a crowded living environment recently that could place them at risk of scabies? And do they have any HIV risk factors? Moving to the exam, after vitals, the most important component is obviously the skin. But also be sure to examine the lymph nodes as lymph adenopathy could suggest lymphoma. And consider a thyroid exam. Although renal and liver disease are significant causes of pruritus, a thorough abdominal exam is honestly low yield, and you'll be checking a metabolic panel anyway. Regarding diagnostic tests, if the likely diagnosis can be made from the skin exam alone, no additional testing is necessary, though if scabies is suspected, skin scrapings may be taken for confirmation under a microscope. If the likely diagnosis is unclear from the exam, or if the patient was thought to have a primary dermatologic condition that did not respond to treatment, key tests include a complete blood count, a complete metabolic panel, which includes the creatinine and liver function tests, and an HIV test. A TSH is often recommended to screen for thyroid disease, and the chest X-ray can be obtained to look for mediastinal and hyaluronic lymphadenopathy that can be a sign of lymphoma. The key takeaway points for generalized pruritus. Overall, its most common cause is xerosis, also known as dry skin. Scabies is an important consideration due to its highly contagious nature and the public health consequences. Renal failure, cholestatic liver disease, lymphoma, and HIV are also particularly important systemic diseases to consider. And if a likely diagnosis is not evident from the skin exam alone, 
or if the pruritus fails to improve with treatment of an initially suspected primary skin condition, CBC, a complete metabolic panel, HIV test, TSH, and chest X-ray should all be ordered.